Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The idea for Just a Couple Days by Rick Michaels was an idea he had for years. It wasn't until he finally got help for his alcoholism that he was able to put it all down on paper. It's a fictional story of a miracle that happens to the character as a miracle had just happened in his life, a story of hope. It tells us that as long as we have faith and there is breath in our bodies, we can rebuild our lives no matter how far we have gone. Rick grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, drank, used drugs for over 20 years, years that went by, he says, in a blur. Thanks to the grace of power greater than himself and a wonderful facility called the Healing Place, he has been clean for 13 years. Finished college, rejoined the human race and continually learning and trying to give others what has been freely given to him. Rick Michaels, author of Just a Couple Days, is our guest on This Week in America. Rick, great to have you with us on the program. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Rick, and that's a nice name you have there. Yeah, I like yours as well. I feel like I'm talking to myself when I'm talking to Rick. This is Rick. (laughs) I like it. There's an echo here in the room. It's just, it's such a wonderful job that you've done with the book and telling the story. That's a story that's a a lifeline for so many people. What was the inspiration for writing the story just a couple days? Okay. It's like I sort of mentioned in the little biography you read is, it's just something knocked around in my head for a lot of years. Just what would happen if something like this were to happen in today's time. And it was just something I never did. And when I was at the healing place for the second time, and it just sort of, uh, I guess I was still not right in my right mind. I'd really been not drinking or using drugs for, you know, less than a few weeks, maybe, but I was starting to feel creative again. And I just started writing. It just came out. I, I took the idea and I just started writing and it, it sort of just poured out of me probably just took a couple months to do it and then switch it around a little bit. And I have to tell you guys that basically I was writing it for myself, but the more I wrote it, the more I realized that it could be something that other people might get, you know, uh, it might help them to recover as well. Well, in reading reviews, that's exactly what has happened. There are so many people in similar circumstances out there, and uh, they benefit from you sharing your story, the the story that you've written just a couple days. Rick Michaels is the author and our guest on the program. The website for the book, it's, it's by, published by stratton-press.com. In their book section, you'll find it at uh, all the usual places. You can go to our website this week in America.us and link on directly and get information on uh, on Rick and the book. I mentioned uh, the period of time, but several decades where you were involved in in drinking and drug abuse. Yes. Talk talk about that that period in your life. What was that like, and and how long was it actually? It actually began well when I was real long, young. I, uh, Apparently, I used to crawl around on the kitchen table and knock off everybody's beer when I was like two years old. But I don't remember my first drink until uh, I was trying to do like my mom and wrap uh, and dunk fruitcake in bourbon. And uh, that that was a mess. So I drank the bowl of bourbon. And that's what I really first felt the effects of alcohol. And then by the time I was 14, I was smoking pot that led, led directly into LSD, basically anything. I just I just went wild. And in that, but the, through the whole thing, the undercurrent of all the drugs and trouble was the alcohol. That's where it started. And eventually, 30 years later, something like that, uh, that's where it ended, which is the crack cocaine and, and the liquor. What was and the it was just, uh, Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, what was, what was the last straw when you, know, you finally got to the point where I need to try to do something? What finally made you stop? That was, a, that was went on for a period of about four years. When I really wanted to and just couldn't, uh, some of the readers will be reading the big book, uh, the bill in the story. He uh, he tried day after day and day after day and just couldn't do it, and it got to be so frustrating. And I, and I came to a point I wanted to kill myself, but I didn't. And then when I couldn't do that, uh, some people say I didn't have the courage to kill myself. I think just the opposite. It takes courage not to kill yourself when you're yes. feeling that low. Yes. And it, and to make the courage to go on, and I started going to detox at the healing place several times, and I think the turning point was my dad. He picked me up down at the healing place one time, and 
as we were driving away to bring me back home, he looked over and he says, why don't you just stay there? I said, dad, you know, that program is like a year long. And he said, what's a year when we're talking about your whole life? So I promised him that if I got in trouble again, and that's where I'd go. And sure enough, I got between that time and a couple months later, I got arrested twice. Uh, I spent 10 days in jail here in good old Louisville. And uh, that was it. I just said, it's time to go. And it's basically Rick, when the consequences finally just get too high and you'll do what it takes to get through what you got to go through. The healing place is a wonderful place for that because when you start out there, you live on an upstairs. It's it's nicer now, but in those days it was squalor. And you don't think you're going to live another day. A hundred men in one big room with one bathroom, three little silver chrome things that stuck out of the ground, no walls or barriers between you. And, and you know, you don't think you, you say, I can't live like this. Yes. But the thing is you acclimate because you got your eye on what you want and you're willing to go through what they're putting you through to get what you want. And as you move along through the program, uh, it's rewarded. After a while, you get a nicer places to live and you start to feel the rewards of staying sober until eventually you get your own apartment and you go out to work and still under the umbrella of the healing place until you adjusted to society and you're ready to go. And, uh, it's just, uh, it was worth it. Of course I went twice, so it was double worth it. Well, yeah. And, and talk about that. When you left the first time, did you ever think that, that you may be back there or was that, you just sort of closed that door on your part of the life, uh, uh, your part of your life at that time? I mean, it's interesting. You were there, didn't work the first time, but willing to go back and do it again. Thankfully your dad there to, to help encourage that. How difficult was right. that going back that second time, making that decision to, to try it again? I knew when I left Rick that I would be back oh, if okay. I didn't get myself killed or locked up in a, oh, on some kind of serious yeah. charges. I told him, I go, I'll be back. And I said, Rick, you're, you don't go out there. You'll end up on this death board. The healing place has a, a big, huge cardboard thing of, of photographs of men that went out and I did not make it back. But I knew I'd be back if I could, because I'd only had about a thousand dollars and I would just decide I was just going out and have fun. Maybe I just needed to see once and for all, you know, <laughs> And it was just like it wasn't good anymore. It was it was the same thing. I still got high. I still got drunk. I still met girls and all, all that. But it, it was all hollow because I had learned so much from the healing place that it was just like it's it's all true what they said. You know, I have a stubborn head, and I think anybody will agree with me that uh, it takes about an inch thick girl bit to get through my thick skull. <laughs> But and boy, <laughs> yeah, when you make that penetration, it actually works, and, and it did for you. Rick Michaels is our guest. His book is Just a Couple Days. You'll find the book at stratton-press.com. And uh, the book section there, you'll find it the usual places. Go to our website, and you can link on directly with Stratton and get all the information on the book. The Healing Place, I find this place fascinating. What is different about this recovery facility? What sets it apart? It's a social model of recovery program. And I think it's what I was explaining before. It is the, it's a long term. Yes. It's not no 30 day in and out kind of thing. If, if anybody was as bad as me, 30 days just will not do it. It can. Don't get me wrong. If you follow what they tell you in 30 days and you take their suggestions and follow through, it can be done. But like hardcore, like me, I needed like time to live, to live life month after month after month learning responsibilities, learning how to relearn things. And I think that's what the difference is. And when you finally get to a point, they, uh, I remember uh, you get to a point in like your seventh step when you start taking, you go over to detox and you take new guys around and you show them the program. And, uh, and I started talking about what things were going on. This guy was like, he was in a cloud, you know? And he said, you must love this place. I'm like, oh my God, you're <laughs> A year and a half ago, I would have said I would, can't stand this place. And now not only do I love it, but, you know, I even got a job working there and then helping other alcoholics. Rick Michaels. So there's just something about it. When you feel your life being saved, you you tend to be loyal to the place that helps you save it. And my sponsor pointed to the room over de the roof over detox one time. And he did you see them, Rick? And I said, what? I don't see anything. He says, there's angels all over that roof. I'm like, oh. Now I, I know what he's talking about. I know exactly what he's talking about. Rick Michaels uh, with us on the program talking about just a couple of days, his book, which is a fictional story. How much of it is fictional and how much of it is sort of autobiographical, would you say? 
Well, it's complete fiction, but the character of, of Mike uh, is, I wrote him in from my point of view, so a lot of things he feels are things that I felt. Uh, the, his wife in the story is fashioned after my ex-girlfriend, Tammy. Uh, so, I mean, it was me writing it, so a lot of it is true about my feelings, but what ultimately happens is fiction. And it's a, I might say it is, it does get a little graphical. Uh, I've been told that that those things can happen in today's world because I honestly thought Stratton would cut a lot of it out, but they didn't. So I kind of want to warn the reader. It does get graphic, but it's nothing that can't happen today well, or that, worse. Some well, people you, go through a lot worse things in today's world. Yeah, It gives it that realism that I think is why the book is, is doing so well and receiving such positive reviews. The book mm. is just a couple of days. Rick Michaels, the author is our guest on the program Obviously, a, a talented writer, once you get to, to focus on that, you're able to tell the story and to help others by telling that story. Have you written anything else? Is there any other writing that uh, you've done or in the process of doing? Well, I have quite a few stories I wrote in college, uh, creative writing class stories. Uh, nothing lately. Uh, I tinker around a little bit, uh, like some poetry, uh, another Blue Jay way, which is just this trading places with a bird. I don't think it'd be any good, but, uh, I like that. But I, like I do the get to fly. In this. I do get to fly at the end of the story. See, that's not all bad. And we've all thought about doing that at some point or another, when we see them fly off into the distance and you're thinking, okay, there's got to be some benefit to, uh, to that. So we'll see if, if, if any of those get published. Are you thinking about publishing any of those? Uh, well, uh, I'm certainly write them out and I'll be in touch with Dean and, and, uh, Alicia, at Stratton and see if anything's any good. Uh, I do. I, I would like to, uh, like, a it's like some nonfiction work. I have a, a thought that maybe I can use your show as a platform briefly, if I may. Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, I used to, uh, counsel juvenile delinquents that are in juvenile detention. And, uh, you know, I'd go there to their place and I'd talk to them and, and I would tell them basically what we've been talking about. I go, you know, guys, one of these days you're going to, it'll be like, you just closed your eyes, you blinked and when, and you're going to open your eyes and, and 20, 30 years will have gone by. And, uh, you're going to wonder what, what happened to your life. And it is sad. It's a sad thing. Guys. And I tell you, because I did it. And, and, uh, Rick, there's, their faces were just stone blank. They weren't listening to a word I was saying. And I, I understand that because. I was the same way. Nobody, once I got started into this, nobody could tell me a thing. Yes. I wouldn't listen to anybody. I agree with them. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But I would never do anything. And that's the result. Once you get started, it, it's really, really hard to bring somebody back around. So I think prevention is the key to the problem. Some people may say, oh, that's easier said than done. But if it was a part of the school system, just as important as English or math or history, to teach these children that you know, before they get started. And I think maybe if I had a dose of that, maybe my life would have been different because once I got started, there was no, no words were going to deter me. Just like my words to those kids did not deter them. So it's just a thought. And, and I think about the money just to incorporate that into a learning process when children are young uh, would be worth so much money that, that ends up, they end up in jail or, or treatment centers and yes. treat, you know, all that. You know, it's just, it seemed to be a saving money. That's my little soapbox. Well, so and I'll, I'll shut up on that now. No, you've been there. So you understand exactly what it is you're, you're, and who you were trying to reach. And with your book, you, you're, being, you're being able to do that. How do you think the book will help uh, other people suffering from addiction, whether drugs or, or alcohol? What kind of feedback are you getting? And how do you hope this book will help others? Okay. Well, I am getting some feedback from friends and family and I, I'm, I, I'm making sure that they, they're not just telling me to please me. They do, they do enjoy it. And, uh, it's like Rick, when I was at the healing place and I wouldn't listen to anybody. Do you remember Charlie Brown? Oh, of course. When they were listening to the teachers or the parents, yep. they're all going, wah, 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 <laughs> wah, 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 right? Yes. That's what everybody sounded to me like when I first got down there. And then there was a couple guys down there and I'll say their names because I'm not breaking in on enmity. One is Daryl and one is Lem. And they were so funny. I mean, they were hysterical. They told stories that every one of us in that room got because we were all just where they were. And it was so funny. We would laugh our butts off. And then 
they would take it in home and bring it around serious. And then they had everybody's attention. You know, they weren't just lecturing. They were, they were gathering the audience and they delivered their message home. And although my story isn't really funny, there might be a few funny parts in it, I think, but it, it's an attention grabber. So if you're, if your attention is a grab by the, the graphic, the graphicness of it, then the message will come home that way. Yes. Cause you're reading all the same words. So if, if that makes any sense. Well, it does. And again, you have that relatability factor when you understand your backstory and, and what brought you to write just a couple of days. It's something that, uh, that others can see themselves in you and how you were able to, to turn your life around. The book is just a couple of days. Rick Michaels is the author. The book's available at stratton-press.com in the, uh, the bookstore there. You'll find it, uh, the usual places, a few minutes left in the program. What was Talk about inspiration for you because you really needed, there was a spark somewhere that kept you going through, through all of this and the times when you thought about taking your, your own life, what, what inspires you or who inspires you? Well, my parents, cause, uh, I have a very big, my family's a very good support group and, and my father's wife and, uh, they worried about me terrifically. And I, and it originally wanted to do it for them, but ultimately I had to do it for me. Yes. And it, it's really, it's a dull, but it's just, it comes down to it. I did not want to keep going to jail. I did not like going to emergency rooms. I did not like throwing up blood. I did not like having kidney stones and, and, uh, and all these consequences that kept on over and over and over and over again. I just got tired. And I finally looked at first, I thought I'll just do what they say, but I'm still putting a Rick spin on it. I don't know if you have a Rick spin, Rick. But exactly. I do. That exactly. means I do things my way yes. anyway. Even though I'm making it look like I'm doing things yours, I'm still doing them mine. And guess what? That did not work. So finally, I got to a point where I said, all right. You know, sort of like you surrender to win. I give up. What do you want me to do? I'm, I'm completely yours. Just tell me what to do, and I'm going to do it. And that's when recovery began, if that makes any sense. You have to be leveled. And yes. you build it up. Your foundation is rocky. You start all over again and you build up step by step, day by day. And you don't, you don't count. Oh my God, next year, what am I going to be like? You don't, you know, it doesn't go that way. You know, they say one day at a time. That is so true. You don't think beyond 24 hours. Shoot at the first time. At the healing place, I didn't think past the hour. I mean, just get me through the hour. Get me through this meeting. And then I do it again. And the next hour and the next hour, then the next day. And if you see that every day, pretty soon you get close to 14 years. And uh, it's still, it's still the fact out there. It, it doesn't stop, you know. I, uh, you know, I still I, I think about it from time to time. But see, what I always do is, I know to continue on with those kind of thinking, and do that. Well, I know where I'm a thousand percent sure where I'll end up back up, the very same place that I fought so hard to get away from. So that's why that's how I can that's how I can do it. It doesn't take long after years of practice to think where you don't want to go back to. Yes, and those those memories are still quite vivid. I, I'm getting the impression that that just because you've got these years of, of sobriety doesn't necessarily mean that will be tomorrow. It, it's still what a, a work in progress. Your life right now. That's correct. Progress, not perfection. Yes, that's what we we're about. Yeah. It's such a, a powerful book, Just a Couple Days by Rick Michaels. The book's available at stratton-press.com in, in the bookstore. I mentioned in the beginning that clean for the 13 years, rejoined the human race. What was that like when you realized you were about to rejoin the human race? When you felt comfortable enough thinking, I think I can beat this thing. I think, I think I'm doing it. What's that like when you have that realization that the old Rick is back? There's a couple of things that you made me think about. One of them was somebody said once that, you know, you're getting better when how many keys you got on your key ring. Now you had none and you could get one and you got a yes. pair of car keys and house keys. And Interesting. he's like, well, you know, you're gaining keys. You're doing something right. And another was my dad again. He, uh, he looked at me, he says, you're different. I'm like, what do you mean? What am I, what, what's going on? He goes, no, you, you act different. You walk different. You look different. And see, I didn't see it because, you know, I'm with me every day. I don't yes. see these things. Yes. But he was not seeing me for a week or so at a time, and he noticed the difference. And Other people noticing you is when you begin to believe it yourself. Yeah. 
Rick is back. And the book is a book that's uh, touching so many people. It's available at the usual places. I'll send you to the publisher, stratton-press.com is their website. There's a book section there where you can get information on the book. The book is just a couple of days by, uh, or just a couple days by our guest on the program, Rick Michaels. Uh, go to our website. You'll get all the information there as well. Rick, congratulations on the successful turnaround of your life. You've done an amazing job in in turning your life around and extending a helping hand to other people to get them to the same same point where where you are right now. And a remarkable job in writing the book. Thank you for sharing your story with us today on the program. You're welcome. Thank you, Rick, for the time. And and remember, if you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's a fact. And Rick lays it out in his book, Just a Couple Days. Rick Michaels, our guest. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.